This is the Mustang Convertible, and this specific one behind me is powered by the 5-liter V8 Coyote engine. On top of that, it's got the Showstopper red interior, it's got the GT Performance package, as well as active valve exhaust and the upgraded sound system. So this thing is an absolute monster! Steve here, Cars with Steve, and before we get started, I want to give a huge shout out and a thank you to Formula Ford for giving me access to this vehicle to shoot the video for you today. Check down in the description below for their contact details. Now this is going to be a quick walk around looking at all of the basics of the vehicle. If you're looking for something specifically talking about the features of the GT Performance Package, check down below because I've done a few videos on how the Performance Package works and what it's all about. But right, guys, let's dive into it, have a little bit of fun, and see what the Mustang GT Convertible is all about. Starting off, looking at some exterior styling of the vehicle. So this thing does have the GT Performance Package, which gives it this beautiful split-spoke rim. Now on top of that, it's got the Brembo brakes, and it's got six-piston calipers and upgraded springs, which means it's got improved braking performance. On top of that, underneath, inside of the Performance Package, it's going to have the K-Brace, the rear anti-sway bar, and a few other things. But if you're looking for more of an in-depth walk-around of the Performance Package, check down below because I've put together a comprehensive video. But at the same time, I love it. Inside of the Performance Package, we've got this beautiful Pirelli p0 tire it's a 19 inch and it's absolutely beautiful we've got an incredible look to the actual body itself moving forward into our headlamps so we've got our led headlamps into our fog lamps as well and then we've also got some functional head scoops up overhead now on top of that in the front so as we look we've got our splitter in the front now one of the benefits of these performance splitters inside of mustangs is it creates a little bit of added downforce so beneficial hugely because just the nature of these vehicles they are incredibly powerful so having that added downforce definitely helps with handling now one package that this thing doesn't have that you could look at is the magna ride system magna ride is essentially going to help you out with the actual handling of the vehicle so it's essentially magnetic particles inside of the actual suspension system so what's going to happen is it helps with body roll so as you turn rather than the vehicle turning and the body rolling sideways it keeps the car flatter again improved handling do you need that package not necessarily it's going to ultimately depend on what you're doing with your car Right now, taking a peek underneath the hood of the vehicle. So the convertible Mustang is available with two different engine choices. It's either the 2.3 liter EcoBoost or this five liter V8 engine, which when you go with is gonna depend on your budget, but the five liter is an absolute beast. From a power perspective, this thing is going to be able to push out 460 horsepower and 420 pound feet of torque. So plenty of power when it comes down to it. Now on top of that, because of the GT Performance Package, we've got this black painted strut brace over the top of the vehicle as well. Looks absolutely incredible. And we've got easy access to a few things. So we can easily top up some fluids if we need to. And checking our oil is a little bit more challenging because of this brace, but we can get it just at the top there as well. Now moving to the back side of the vehicle. So this thing has the 401A package. So it's got a couple more things, most specifically that we're gonna notice on the inside of the vehicle. But on the back side, looking at some standard technology, we do have our backup camera as well as that reverse sensing system. Now on top of that, we do have our sequential turn lights there as well, which is incredible. And then we've got our quad tip exhaust down below. As I mentioned, this one does have the active elf performance exhaust. So let's fire this thing up so you can hear what that sounds like. Pretty damn nice. I love the sound of this thing. And one of the cool things is that on the steering wheel, we can actually change between the different modes. So we've got the quiet mode, we've got normal sport track as well. And we can also set this thing up so that it's got a quiet start. So you've got a ton of flexibility when it comes down to it. Taking a peek at the key fob of the vehicle. So we've got our pony badge along the back there. We've got our unlock and our lock button, our remote start, trunk release, horn or panic alarm, as well as our emergency access key. So very straightforward there. Now, a couple things to point out, we can remote start directly through the key fob or we can remote start through our cell phone using the Ford Pass app, and that's good for Android and iPhone devices. Now, in order to be able to remote start from the fob, we press the lock button once, circle button twice. Oh, fired up, sounds absolutely incredible. 
Now in order to cancel the remote start, you just press that circle button once and remote start is now canceled. Now, in order to be able to get into the trunk of the vehicle, we can double press the button on the top there, or along the bottom, I should say. So we can double press that. But where a plate would sit underneath, there's also a release there. So we can press that button in order to lift this thing up. Let's have a peek inside. All right, so cargo dimensions for the vehicle are going to be showing up. So as you can see, we do have quite a little bit of space in the back of this thing. And we can fold down those second row seats if we wanted to create a tiny little bit more space as well. So not a ton of space because at the end of the day, this is a sports car. But it's nice to know that we can fit things like golf clubs in the back of this thing. As we hop inside, so a few things to point out. So along the left side, nothing there. Along the right side, we do have our subwoofer as well popping this thing up as you can see there we do have our inflator kit so the mini spare tire is not available with the gt performance package but there are some packages that would give us that flexibility we can always look at something aftermarket but as part of being a ford owner we also do have access to ford roadside assistance now, in order to be able to fill up fuel inside of this vehicle, it's very straightforward. So along our driver's side, we've got a little cutout there. We can pop this thing open and Bob's your uncle. Now, it's a capless system. Now, when it comes down to fuel quality, this is where people get a little bit confused. Because when it comes down to the fuel quality itself, the minimum manufacturer's recommendation for the GT trim level is just your regular 87 gas, 87 octane. Now, having said that, this is a performance vehicle, so I don't recommend the 87 at a minimum. Ideally, you want to use an 89 or a 91. And the big reason why is because of the overall performance, because when we use a lower quality octane, you may end up hearing that engine knocking. So if you ever get that, just throw a higher premium fuel inside of this thing instead. Ideally, run it at an 89 right from the get-go as well. But I definitely recommend that in order to be able to get the most performance out of the vehicle. Now, taking a peek on the outside of the vehicle. So we do have a cap here, and this is where we would go if we ever need to get emergency access to the vehicle. So we've got a little keyhole in the bottom there. We would use our emergency access key to pop this cover off. We do have intelligent access for the vehicle, so we can press on the top there to be able to lock the doors. We can slide our hands in in order to be able to unlock, and then pulling this thing open. Beautiful. Look at this, showstopper red interior. This thing looks incredible. But along the driver's side door, we've got our seat memory buttons there because we're in the 401 version premium of the convertible. Along the side, as you can see there, we do have the ability to control our side view mirrors. We've got our window up and down, and then we've also got another button. Now, this one is going to be for the mini windows in the back. So inside of the convertible, we do have the flexibility of being able to roll those things down if we wanted to. Just to the left-hand side of the steering wheel, we've got our fog lamp button, figure out what's going on with our running lamps. We can increase or decrease the brightness of the instrument cluster screen there, which speaking of which, this is the 401A version, so it's the digital dash, so beautiful look to it. You do have that same dash inside of the EcoBoost 201 as well. And as we start to move down, we do have our sunglasses holder, so we can pop this thing out if we wanted to, click it to lock it back into place, and then we've also got another trunk release on the inside. Moving down, we do have our pedals there, We've also got our hood release, and then we've got our OBD2 port just along the very top there. We can just kind of make it out. All right, now hopping inside of this beauty. So as I mentioned, this is the 401A version. So we're gonna get some nice things, but first thing I wanna point out these beautiful seats. Like this is the Showstopper Red and it pops. Like it pops quite a little bit. The base seat is incredible. We've got the option for just regular ebony. We've got a tan. We've got the Showstopper Red as well as Midnight Blue. Now the Midnight Blue is actually one of my favorites. It's the ebony seat with that blue stitching. I think it looks absolutely incredible. But if we start taking a peek at the steering wheel itself, so a lot Lots of things to cover off here, but this is just going to be a basic highlight. Like if you're looking for a more in-depth walk around of the steering wheel as well as the Sync 3 media screen, check down in the description below because I've put together a comprehensive video on how both of these things work. But let's look at some of the basics. Now we've got our volume control on the left hand side. We've also got adaptive cruise control. So the adaptive cruise control is a set it and forget it cruise. So you set it at 100, car in front of you slows down, yours is automatically going to break. So very straightforward. All along the right hand side, we've got the option of going up and down between the instrument clusters. So we've got a few different screens we can move towards. And then we've also got a voice command prompt for our steering wheel. So that command prompt is going to let us change radio stations, change songs. We can do a number of things using our voice. Moving down a little bit, we've got a few different things for our settings. We can answer or hang up on a phone call. We can flick our navigation on as well. So one of the nice things about navigation inside of the vehicle when it's built in is that the navigation, the route itself, is actually going to show up inside of that 12.3 inch digital screen. Now, one thing to note, if you don't have the 401s or if you don't have factory navigation inside of your Mustang, don't worry about it because we do have the option of using our phone. So we can use either Android Auto or Apple CarPlay to use Apple Maps, Google Maps, Waze directly through this middle screen. So it is really smart there. 
As we move down, we've also got the option of flipping through our active sources. And that's one of the cool things because we've got AM, FM, Sirius XM as well. We can connect to our phone's audio, but if you have an MP3, or I should say, if you've got a USB with some MP3s on it, you can plug it into the available USB port and then you can listen to songs that way as well. So we've got a lot of flexibility when it comes down to it. Now, as we start to move over a little bit, now this one does have the upgraded Bang & Olufsen sound system. So we've got a B&O badge up along the top, just above our gauges. Now those gauges, the oil and the vacuum gauge are gonna be part of that GT performance pack. And then we've also got a beautiful spun aluminum look along the entire dash as well. Now, a couple other things to point out with this Sync 3 media screen. So as I mentioned, we've got Android Auto, Apple CarPlay capabilities. We've got some basics for driver assistance settings, things like that. Moving down the actual center stack, we've got some basics for our audio control. We've got our volume rocker, tuning rocker as well. And then we've also got heated and ventilated front seats. And that's because we're in the premium version of this vehicle. So we've got leather seats, heated and cooled seats, because we also don't have the Recaros. We've got our basics for our climate control, which is also dual zone inside of this version of the vehicle. And then we've also got our engine start stop button. And that's gonna be the same whether we've got the 10 speed automatic transmission or the six speed manual. We've also got our toggle switches. So the toggle switches are kind of neat because it brings a new element to what you can do with this vehicle. But we've got our four-way blinkers. We can turn our traction control on or off. We've got some different steering modes and we've also got some different drive modes. And each thing is gonna do something different. Like we've got our normal comfort versus sports steering. And we've got a series of different drive modes like our snow mode, as well as our track mode, drag, strip, things like that. So again, each mode is gonna do something different. Which mode you're in is gonna be up to you, but my personal preference, leaving it in the sport mode for the steering wheel, as well as the sport mode for the actual drive mode itself. It just brings a new level to the vehicle. Now, one of the nice things about the sport mode is it actually revs the vehicle a little bit higher as well. So if you're a little bit of a fan of more of a sportier performance, definitely recommend keeping it in that sport mode. Now, one of the nice things, so this is the 10 speed automatic transmission. So yes, the automatic transmission is great because it's automatically going to flip gears for us. But one of the cool things is that we also have paddle shifters on the steering wheel. So we've got our minus and our plus buttons on there. And it is really, really nicely positioned. So as we're driving, we can easily flip out gears as we need to. And one other thing to point out, we do have our lane keeping system as well. We can toggle that system on or off by pressing that left stick, the left turning stick. So there's a button on the very tip, like the tip of the stick. So that lane keeping system actually works three different ways. Way number one, if you start to veer over into a lane without signaling, it's gonna shake the steering wheel, almost as if you're running over rumble pavement. It's funny because the first time people drive this with that system on, they're like, what's happening with the alignment? Nothing wrong with the alignment, it's just a safety feature, but we can turn that thing off as well if we really don't like it. The second way, if we start to veer over without signaling, it's gonna gently nudge us back into our lane to keep us centered. The third way, it's gonna do a mixture of both. So it'll give us a little bit of a steering wheel shake and then it'll gently bump us back into our lane as well. So think of that system as if you were looking at like a bowling lane, those safety lanes, that's essentially what it is, right? You bowl the ball and then if you kind of bounce over one side or the other, it's gonna kind of keep you in your lane, but you're gonna kind of go left or right as you go. So it's not a lane centering system like we would see in some other vehicles, but it is nice to know we've got that safety feature. Like I said, if you don't like it, you can turn it off if you really wanted to. Our right stick controls our windshield wipers. We can pull towards us in order to get that front wiper going. Now, as we start to move down a little bit, so as I mentioned, this is the 10 speed automatic transmission, but we do have our parking brake and that's going to be in the same position whether we're looking at the 10 speed or the six. We've got a few cup holders that also has a hidden component if we ever need to start the vehicle and our key fob has died, we would simply put the fob in there. Moving down a tiny bit more, we also do have a little armrest. Inside of the armrest, we've got a USB port as well as a 12 volt power point as well. So we've got a few different power points inside of this vehicle. We do have a few more power points right on the bottom also. So we've got a USB port as well as another 12 volt power point just underneath the toggle switches. Now, as we start to move up a little bit, we do have an auto dimming rear view mirror. So this mirror is great because it does help us out, especially later on at night. If we get blinding lights behind us, the vehicle is automatically gonna dim the lights for us. Moving up a bit more, we do have our cabin control lighting. And now because we're in the convertible, we've got another button in order to be able to actually open up the top. We'll get to that one in just a second. But looking up overhead here, we do have our home link. So if we wanted to program in a garage door opener we've got at home, we can easily do that. We've also got our vanity mirror with the lights. We can take this thing and then we can extend it out a tiny, 
tiny little bit. Like it's not gonna block much sun, but it's nice to know we can extend it out a teeny little bit. So kind of nice there, but this thing is great. At the end of the day, visibility wise, like I can see absolutely everything. Don't have to worry about those pillar assists and things like that. Now, one of the cool things about this version of the vehicle, actually in every Mustang now, as of the 2021 model year, Ford's included it as part of the Copilot 360 package. And that's going to be our blind spot system. So that lets us know if anybody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. And that's just an unobtrusive light that's gonna highlight on the side view mirrors on both the driver and the passenger side. All right, now next up, how do we actually open this roof up? So it's actually surprisingly simple to be able to do it. The car doesn't need to be fully started. We at least need to be in accessory mode. So what that means is press the engine start stop button without your foot on the brake and what will happen is that as you can see there the seat's sliding forward and that's part of that easy entry exit system but on top of that it puts the vehicle into full accessory mode so what that means is we can now take this handle we can flip it counterclockwise and then we can just pop the handle up and we're just going to take this part and we're just going to press back on it windows start to roll down up she goes absolutely beautiful and then in order to be able to close it, it's literally the same idea. So we're just gonna take the opposite way. We're gonna push the button more towards the front of the vehicle. And we're just gonna press and hold as it goes. Now, one thing to note, this thing can open and close at low speeds, like five kilometers an hour or lower. It's not gonna go, so you can't be driving highway speeds or 20, 30 kilometers an hour, or whatever the case may be. You need to be going low speeds or stopped. In order to finish this thing up, you're just gonna pull the handle. You're gonna flip it clockwise lock it back into place as well. And then one thing to think about, because we are in the convertible version of the vehicle, we've got those mini, mini windows in the back. So we just have to make sure that we roll those mini windows up and then we roll up our main windows there as well. So that's the one thing, the mini windows is something people always forget about inside of this thing when you're closing it up. So just make sure you hit that window button along the very bottom in order to be able to roll up those mini windows as well. But that is going to be this vehicle in a nutshell. Let's take it out for a test spin. Ah, uh, yeah. You have to test drive this thing with the roof down. <laughs> like, it just has to happen. Is it ideal for audio? Absolutely not. But is it ideal for video and just the overall feel of it? Absolutely. So let's have a little bit of fun and see how this thing handles. So a couple things when we look at the driving mode. So I'm going to make sure I'm in the sport steering mode. And I'm also going to be in the sport driving mode as well. So this is going to be good. Oh yeah, this is gonna be good. Beautiful day to be doing this right now though. It's absolutely gorgeous outside. I mean, it would be nice if I had a little bit of overcast, but what do you do? That's nice. All right, now, a couple things about it. Um, because we're in the GT Performance Package, this thing is going to have a 355 rear axle ratio. So what that means is we're gonna have improved acceleration as well. So it's going to negatively impact our fuel economy, not by much, just by like a little bit, but it'll negatively impact it a tiny little bit. Now, one thing interesting, when we look at the six-speed manual transmission, that's going to have a 373 axle ratio instead versus a 355 inside of this vehicle. But let's have fun first. <laughs> Oh, that's nice. All right, ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> there it is. 
it is, super responsive. This thing feels absolutely amazing. Sounded absolutely incredible there as well. So like I said, this is the 10 speed automatic transmission, but I mean, even though it was automatic, it was still absolutely incredible. I had it in the sport mode and I had it inside of the sport steering mode. And on top of that, I had this sport exhaust going as well. So that's the why it sounded the way that it did as we were going. I'm just gonna flip it into the normal mode right now, just for the drive back. And I'm actually curious what this is like. So I'm gonna go for the comfort steering instead. So comfort steering essentially means you're gonna to have to turn the wheel a little bit more in order to complete one rotation. And then inside of the driving mode, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna keep it in sport because it, it's just nice. It's just a nice feel when it comes down to it. All right. <laughs> that sounds so good, so good. And uh, one interesting part, because we can look at this thing in the EcoBoost as well, the 2.3 liter, I mean, it's a good option if you're looking for something that's a little bit more budget friendly. Uh, good option if you're looking for something a little bit more budget friendly, but I mean, it's up to you at the end of the day. Like, this is where things are interesting because people that I know that get the EcoBoost Mustangs most of the time, within a couple of years, they're looking at trading it up to the GT. Um, I mean, it's just one of those things, it's like you get in behind the wheel of something, you're like, what is the GT gonna be like? Or what's the more powerful version gonna be like? So, I mean, which way you go right from the get-go is gonna be up to you. But I mean, I definitely recommend looking at the GT as an option. Like, budget-wise, you're about an extra $10,000 more as well to go from the GT to the convert, uh, from the EcoBoost to the GT. So definitely a couple bucks more, but it's that raw power at the end of the day that you're gonna get inside of this vehicle. So which one you go with, your choice. I was chatting with you earlier about the, um, the, the final drive ratio, so that rear axle ratio, because when we look at the performance package, it's gonna bump it up to a 355 Torsen. It's specifically gonna be a Torsen differential inside of this thing. So a little bit of an improved performance just over the regular Ford stock one. But when you get into the six speed manual, you're gonna have a 373 and the pairing of that 373 with the six speed, good acceleration, good mileage as well. So it's where do you wanna sacrifice at the end of the day? So overall, like first impressions of the convertible, like it is nice at the end of the day, like it's comfortable, the seats themselves, and like whether you decide to go for the showstopper red like we see here, which like, I'm not gonna lie, it looks really sharp. Like you're gonna have to choose the exterior color that you pair it with though, very carefully. Like the black and red does go really well together. I mean, you could go Spider-Man and go blue and red as well, but. like a glove. There it is. Well, folks, that was a look at the Mustang convertible. What did you think? I personally love this thing. It's great to be able to get outside, get outdoors, open things up. It's absolutely beautiful. If you have any questions, drop down in the comment section below and let me know. And until I see you next time, make sure you stay safe.